and accept that change. Um, and then uh, once we've done that, we're going to hit the tab key again to edit or exit out of edit mode. And you'll see that the text will turn pink again and straighten back out. Um, now what we want to do is go back down to the um, bottom panel in the shapes. And uh, you see the bar here um, that starts at zero. We're going to grab that and we're going to drag it all the way to the right and create uh, or maybe move that to 1.00. We're going to go ahead now and change our um, frame from 1 to 180. And this shows you some of the text coming around there. Uh, what we want to do is add another keyframe here, and we can do that by go ahead and back down at the bar. We're not going to change this. We're just going to click it once, and that's going to add another keyframe. shouldn't change from 1.0. Um, so just click it once, and uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our frames. We're going to change 180 to 270, and you'll see that brings the text even further around in our um, in our sequence. Now, what we want to do at this point is we want to um, unwarp the text, if you will. This is where it starts to straighten things out as it comes around the globe. So we're going to drag that 1.00 all the way to the left to 0.00, and you can see. Uh, in your screen that um, everything is pretty much lined up. It's not completed its sequence yet, so things look a little bit weird, but um, that's okay. Now, at this point, um, you can go ahead and render render this out, um, change your render settings and things like that. I personally like to go back to um, frame number one over here, and, uh, and if you hold down the right arrow key, you'll see that it goes through the frame sequence and uh, this just kind of gives you an idea as to how things are going to run. It's a little jerky um, depending on uh, on how beefy your machine is but um, it, it gives you a good idea nonetheless. So um, you don't need to take this all the way through all 700 frames. You can just take it to you know, about you know 400 or so um, once that text gets around and straightens out and uh, the globe starts to spin um, then uh, everything should be pretty good. All right. So um, if you're satisfied, and, and hopefully up to this point you are, you're going to go ahead and hit the F10 key. And you'll see that when you hit the F10 key, now we have our render settings here at the bottom. Uh, the render setting right now defaults to 852 by 480. Um, I personally, I change mine. You just click on that box there. I change mine to 1280. Uh, and then hit tab to go over to the Y coordinate and I hit it to 720. Um, you can leave your, your X and Y aspect at 10 and 10 um, and that should work out fine for you. Uh, down the bottom here, the Kodak, I actually um, go with AVI RAW because uh, I put this into video editing software. I sync up the music and I'm going to let the compression uh, you know, that that software has in it go ahead and use it whether you use Adobe Premiere Pro or uh, Windows Movie Maker, or ULED, or whatever it may be. Um, down the bottom here, we want to make sure that we check RGB. We don't need an alpha channel for this. All right. And then over here on the left, under output, you want to make sure that the folder says um, slash slash renders slash. This is going to create a folder named renders where you have saved your Blender file. So uh, that's where you're going to look for the AVI when everything is all said and done. Now it's good at this point to go ahead and save your file, um, go up to File, Save As, and if you click in the uh, file name there, you can go ahead and uh, name this uh, whatever it is that you want. Um, in this case, we're going to name it the theater name, um, and just click Save As. And you now have your custom theater blender file uh, saved in that same spot. Um, as again, if all is good and you want to go ahead to uh, animate, you'll just click the animate button right here and off it goes and starts to do its animation. Now, um, this uh, 700 frames, depending on what kind of machine you have, could take, uh, could take a couple hours, uh, could take 45 minutes, it really all depends. Um, for this, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and escape out of this and close this render because uh, we already have it done. And I just wanted to give you one quick tip before I uh, let you go to create your custom th studio uh, intro. Um, a lot of people have asked on the boards how they can create their own little uh, farm avatar or, or signature picture of their cinema name or theater name. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, in this case, if you want a full-size render of that screen, um, all you're going to do is go over to Format, change AVI RAW over to JPEG. 
and we're going to change the start frame to something a little bit later on in the uh, in the sequence. We're going to do 555 is, is probably pretty good, 555 frame. Um, that way everything will show up on there, feature presentation, and uh, the globe will be positioned uh, quite appropriately. And then when you've got that, just go ahead and, and click the animate button, and that's going to save a JPEG file in your renders folder of the full size. Now, for the farms, most avatars are sized 90 by 70 six, or by 67. So we're going to go ahead and change our size from X size to 90, or Y size to 67, and then we're going to go ahead and animate that little avatar. You can see right here that it's going ahead and rendered it, and that will be a JPEG file in your renders folder. So. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and it's made some sense for you or at least made this a little bit smoother. Um, next steps are for you to take the AVI file that's found in the renders folder into your favorite video editing software and sync the music up and render out in whatever format it is that you happen to like, whether it be Windows Media Format, MPEG, or QuickTime. Uh, my personal experience is, has been best to render it out as a Windows Media file in 720p uh, high def mode and uh, things seems to clean, come out pretty clean and, uh, and clear for uh, most of the ones I've done. So that's it. Thanks again for watching and I hope this tutorial has helped you create a great custom studio intro. For now I'm Tony Hart saying take it outside. <laughs>